we just over 24 hours before the start of your second game of the competition. Talk us through preparations when it comes to the Gambia. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, Akwaba to everyone. Uh, great to see you again. Um, to be honest, except of uh, the defeat a few days ago, everything is perfect. Uh, we are still in a top class hotel, great service, fantastic training grounds, enjoyable weather, uh, fantastic team, great coaching staff. We only are hungry to, to catch points. We, we want to extend our stay here. Uh, we want to reach at least the group and uh, the, the past the group stage. And uh, we trained well. Um, we were a little bit down after the 3 0 defeat, and for sure because it was Senegal, and for sure because we conceded three goals. But my team is so strong, and mentally so strong. Uh, so we had a good training uh, days, a few good training days, and we feel ready tonight. Uh, we trained last time, and I think uh, also with the return of Abla Jallo and Ibrahim Akoli, two guys who were banned with the yellow card, of second yellow card for the opening game. Um, we feel uh, ready for this game. Uh, yeah, I think first of all we saw really good Guinea in sure the first half. Uh, I think when Guinea doesn't get a red card, Guinea could win that game against Cameroon. At that moment, Guinea was controlling Cameroon. It's only after the red card that Cameroon came more in the match. So it shows the potential. Guinea missed a few important players. I don't know if Kirasi and uh, Kate are going to play tomorrow, but. I can imagine they are at least in the squad list. So Guinea is a very strong team, but we have also the return of two important players. It will be tough to draw players from the first game, but we, we, we have to analyze which first 11 and in which formation we're gonna play. Um, Guinea is good, underestimation would be the most dangerous, uh, but we, we will be ready. I think my players are strong enough to compete with Guinea, and you need a little bit chance, a little bit luck, uh, to score a goal. Um, what we didn't do uh, against uh, Senegal, uh, we now need to do against uh, uh, Guinea. Uh, we, we want to win. A draw could be also, but then we need to win against Cameroon, and that will be much more difficult. So if we can grab three points tomorrow, uh, we are probably second in the lock uh, or third, but we have everything in our own hands looking uh, to the last match. So we go, go out for a victory, uh, but we know it will be a tough battle. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I think uh, Italian football helped me a lot in uh, tactic-wise, also the pace of the game. So I learned a lot in Italy, playing in Italy. So I'm really grateful that I spent my early career in Italy playing football there. Uh, after the fourth game, we, the team, we went back to training. We tried to learn from our mistakes. So we're looking forward to tomorrow's game. We know tomorrow's game is really important for us. So we are prepared and we want to win the game, inshallah. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, every game you have a pressure because we are here to try to win every match and we know it's not realistic. Tomorrow, a point could be helping us, but then we are forced to beat uh, Cameroon in the last game, even with a defeat, but then we have to win 5-0 or something against Cameroon in the last match. There are so many options. We know that Comoros won one match and lost two. Last edition, Tunisia lost two and one match. It's only said that we lost 3-0 because our goal difference makes it more difficult. So I calculate that we need four points. Preferable, we make it ourselves easy and get grab three points tomorrow, and then we need one point against Cameroon. Um, but the pressure is always there when you play a tournament, when you're a sportsman, even a normal game. We want to win always, and that's that's our intention. But I don't feel the pressure as a coach, and my team doesn't feel the pressure. We this is our job. This is what we do. This is what we are used to. Um, my players are used to play for full crowds against the biggest stars in Europe, and they are also the biggest players I have. So we are ready for that. This is a normal game, and we're going to battle for the country, uh, for Gambia, uh, to get the results, to stay as long as possible in this competition. There's no player who dreams of going home uh, next week. We want to stay longer, and we know what is at stake. So we need tomorrow to try to grab the three points. But there's no extra stress. We feel relaxed. 
everything is ready because also we are confident in our qualities. I think we already we already know what is at stake right now because uh, the next game against Guinea is going to be a tough game, but we played them before, so we're just going to walk and try to see their weakness and try to play what we played the last game and won them. So maybe they think we're going to sit back and defend and wait. So this is a game, so we get a gamble. So tomorrow's game, I think me and my colleagues, we are ready and we're going to win, inshallah. Salut, Tom. Par ici. Clairement, uh, yes, uh, Gourassi is a very good striker scoring easy goals against in, 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 in the Bundesliga. He scored three goals for the national team. Uh, for me, Bayo or Bajo, I don't know how you pronounce it in Guinea, is also a fantastic player. He scores beautiful goals in Le Havre, scored five goals for his national team, scored a good goal against Cameroon. Um, so it doesn't matter who we face. Guinea has only good football players and all quality players, a lot of alternatives. Guinea is a team who can reach the semi-final of this Africa Cup. They have all quality players. Guinea has the quality to reach far in every tournament. It's a top team. But I have also good players, and I have confidence in my defenders, my midfield players, and my strikers that we can compete with them. So Guinea is a fantastic team um, who, when they play any country in Africa, can beat them. Um, but not yet, tomorrow against us. That must be clear. And I wish Guinea that they win every game except tomorrow. The scoring against them was uh, really a great feeling. But I said, now tomorrow is more important than the past game. So I'm looking forward to the game. And uh, I hopefully I might repeat it again, inshallah. I think uh, the game against Senegal, uh, the it was really warm, but uh, as a football player, you, you should expect these kind of things, you know. And uh, as a number 10 playing for my national team, a lot is expected from me. That's why when I'm on the pitch, I'm ready to give like 100% or 200% for my nation because I know the expectation back home and from my teammates. But like I said, even the last half, uh, this team, we fight together, we play together, we defend together. So. Tomorrow is a do or die game, so hopefully, inshallah, we're going to win the game. Do you hear me? Ah, now you hear me. Okay, uh, thank you for your question. It's true. And to be honest, uh, since AFCON, last AFCON, we struggled. We, we lost some important players. We had to uh, reinvent ourselves. We lost a lot of midfield players. There were some players who stopped playing football. There were players without club. There were players with long injuries. And as a small nation, Cameroon, you have many millions of football players. We have only two million people. Uh, and we don't have that choice. I already addressed it earlier. We have three players playing in the top eight leagues in Europe currently, and we have less opportunities if someone drops out, if someone is not in shape. We don't have always the right alternatives for that. And we struggled against Chad, against South Sudan, against Congo Brazzaville, against Mali. We had not always good games, and we qualified. That was fantastic for a small nation. And we saw even that we struggled against Burundi and, and Ivory Coast. And against Senegal, the Gambian public was very satisfied with the game. They saw a more offensive team uh, who created more chances. Don't forget that we had more shots than Mozambique, than Equatorial Guinea, than Cape Verde, uh, than all these teams. The only difference was they had shots on target. Equatorial Guinea had one shot on target. It was a goal. Mozambique had two shots on target. It was two goals. And there's a difference in that. Um, but inside the group, the vibe in the group is still the same. The boys have the qualities. We've, we missed some players. We had some struggles. We didn't play a friendly. We had a very short training camp because of the delay of the start. We had to strike. We had to struggle of a plane. Uh, so we always have to cope with these things. But when we are together, before the game against Senegal, I was convinced we will compete. But Senegal is a strong team and a red card totally correct red card, but a red card with 10 against 11 against the champion of Africa, 1-0 behind by 35 degrees, was too difficult. If we stay 11 against 11, maybe we lose 1-0, maybe we play 1-1. Um, so judging on one game 
that we are not anymore that nice team as two years ago. Yes, there are some points who we stepped a, a few steps back, but tomorrow we bounce back, and t t tomorrow night you will tell me I saw the old Gambia again, and with all the flair and all the options, and uh, I hope that, and I'm convinced in that, because I see what I see on training, I know these guys, and like he already said, the pressure on him as a leader is so big, and if you analyze games from him and some other players, Omar Kali, these guys die for their country. These guys love their country. They will defend, they will attack, they will go to the wing. If I tell him, Musa, tomorrow you stay in the goal, he will do that. He will not complain. He will, he will do everything for the national team. And that's our passion. That was our quality in Cameroon. And I'm sure we will stand up tomorrow and show that quality again. It's a little bit funny. The international media doesn't know that, but I'm already five and a half years the worst coach in the history of Gambia, according to the journalists and according to the public. Uh, they never qualified, they never did anything, but I'm the worst coach in history because I play defensive football. We win 1-0 against Tunisia. Coach, if you had attacked, we won 3-0 against Tunisia. We win 1-0 against Morocco. Coach, if you attack, you win 3-0 against Morocco. That's what you guys did all these years. All these years. Now we try to play more offensive and now you say we can see too much goals. So the reason we played like we played was because we know our quality and our weaknesses. And the problem is when journalists and public try to influence players, staff members and the whole public opinion without having any knowledge, with all respect, you are top journalists, but you are not players and you are not coaches. And before I arrived, and I don't want to put the flower on my chest, Gambia had five years not won a game. I arrived in July 2018, and the last competitive win was in September 2013 against Tanzania. So I changed things to a defensive part. We were 172 in the world and never qualified. But when we start winning, you said, ah, oh, but you played too defensive. You need to attack. We have this striker, that striker, that striker. We need to attack. I see sometimes on internet formations with 10 strikers. That's the reality. So we need to learn to defend still. We need still to be disciplined. We need to know our role. We, need, we are still a small nation, even if we compete with Guinea. I, Guinea played 13, 14 Afghans. They are a top nation for so many years. Look at their squad where they all play. Not now only, but all Cameroon. Uh, World Cup level team, African champion 2019, Senegal, African champion 2021-22, World Cup quarter finalist in the past. And we are just for the second time in history qualified with a country of 2 million people and without a real professional league, players in our league are not professional, they earn 40, 50 US dollar. So the whole football nation has to grow and develop, but you can't expect from, oh, one Afghan, we reached the quarterfinal, now, and I say it as a joke in the international media, and you maybe you read it already, but in Gambia, the people expect that we become world champion on the Africa Cup. <laughs> and that's the reality. So I think, they stop already, they think I talk too much. Um, uh, um, but I mean, we have to be realistic, we try to attack, we try to please you as fans, as public, but except when we play defensive football, because we want to stay as long as possible here, because then you can stay also longer here. Let's take no more time now. I think we as uh, attacking players, a lot is demanded from us, so we have good uh, attacking players in our team, so I think uh, tomorrow we just need to combine together and find solution to, to score more goals and to win the game, inshallah. I think uh, as, a, as a player, you know, the coach put his formation, you know, so the intelligence of the players, because we are the one who goes on the pitch to play, so I think your intelligence determines how good you are on the pitch. He, he put his formation, he gave his motivation and everything before the game, but on the pitch, we are with the players. We deliver on the pitch with his with his work also and his help. So these are hard questions for me. For me, because I just want to play. I just want to play. I'm not bothered with uh, 
talk, so uh, I just want to play and enjoy the game and help my nation to win games. That's it, Bull. Thank you very much. See you later.